Hi Hariran. Uh, hope you are doing good. I just review your CV. It looks good. Uh, could you please tell about yourself? Hey, hi, yes, ma'am. So my name is Hari. I'm from basically Noko Embito. So right now I'm working as a Azure uh, DevOps engineer. Uh, overall, right, I'm having around uh, four plus years of experience with uh, Azure and DevOps, all those things. So, you know, I used to work with the uh, virtual machine, Azure Active Directory, and, uh, you know, virtual network, VNet, storage account, and monitoring and load balancers. Uh, apart from that, you know, DevOps perspective, I used to be, you know, uh, York work with the uh, ARM and Azure Functions and Azure Runbook. Uh, parallel, you know, we use Jenkins uh, for our DevOps activity and we have a PowerShell script for, you know, uh, automating the things and stuff. So this is my background. Also in our project, right, uh, we have, you know, uh, Jira as the ticketing tool. Uh, we used to, you know, uh, there is a dedicated team for monitoring all the resources. And I'm playing the role of, you know, SME comes uh, DevOps. So whenever there is an implementation, there is something troubleshooting needed. So if the team, which I'm part of, we are the responsible one to taking care of our you know, customers infrastructure, which hosted it on Azure. So this is basically about myself. Okay, let's move on to questions. Can you please explain about your Azure subscription details of current infrastructure? Yeah, uh, about our uh, Azure subscription, right? So we have close to around, you know, uh, 40 different subscriptions. Yeah, I'll tell you why. Uh, in my client, right, uh, due to some confidential reason, I cannot share my client name. Uh, so I'll tell you on high level, okay? We are supporting one uh, insurance-based company. Basically, they are, you know, out of UK. So they have uh, many sub-client, actually, for each district of their locations. Each and every people, right, they used to have their own uh, subscriptions, actually. Okay, we have a directory, uh, Azure directory. In that Azure directory, we have uh, many subscriptions. Uh, each and every client, right, uh, by default, they'll have uh, three subscriptions. One is for production, another one is for, you know, uh, there's uh, something called uh, uh, sandbox, and another one is for testing. Okay, production subscription is most critical one. Uh, you know, the priority of, you know, sandbox, the mirror copy of my production, which will be there in my sandbox subscription. Finally, testing, when we develop something or testing something, the respective client will test it on top of testing subscriptions. So likewise, we have a close to, you know, 50 to 60 different subscriptions associated in my Azure account right now. Okay. Could you please explain your current Azure network architecture? Yeah, sure. Uh, coming to the network perspective, right? Uh, predominantly, we are uh, focused into three different uh, Azure uh, regions. Okay, so one is uh, Central India, another one is uh, you know Central US, and uh, we have you know European. We have a region. These three regions only we are you know predominantly using it. Uh, each and every region we have a. VNet, okay, we used to have a two VNet, one is for our general activity and things and stuff. The another VNet for, you know, uh, the container service, Kubernetes, for that purpose, we have a dedicated VNet. So likewise, three region, uh, each will have a two region by the mean. Uh, totally put together around uh, six uh, VNets available per uh, subscriptions, okay. Uh, across the VNet, right, we established the VPC, sorry, VNet peering. By the way, they will all will have a communication, okay, uh, by each other. From my Azure uh, subscription, right, I established express route uh, connectivity to my on-premises. So, by the way, my on-premises will have a connection to my uh, Azure subscription and the resources. By the way, we are always in sync with our on-prem environment. There's a dedicated on-premises team available. They'll take care of all firewall and things and stuff on the physical location. So, this is how we maintain our network. Uh, for providing security, right, we used the network um, uh, security group, uh, kind of ACL. We'll, you know, apply that on top of subnet level. So whichever the port is really needed, we'll open them. So rest all going to be by default denied. Okay. So this is what pretty much about our current uh, network infrastructure, man. Okay. Could you please explain about possible Azure uh, scalability? Yeah. So coming to Azure scalability, right? We have plenty of options. I'll I'll go with the flow, okay? So example, if you take, we have Azure, you know, Azure uh, uh, scale set. Okay, it works like automatic scaling uh, when there is an issue in my virtual machine based upon the criteria and condition what I defined at the time of uh, you know, scale set creation. It will spin up the new VM 
also by default taken example uh, if i define my you know cluster or limit uh, three instance i mean three vm or four vm if anything happened to any one of this vm right the availability set help me to scale my not scaling replacing my you know failed uh, virtual machine and also we have you know uh, any time you know it's it's possible to spin up a new vm according to my requirement because azure is totally flexible basically cloud itself it's totally flexible so these are the you know different possible way that i can uh, make sure uh, the secure scalability of my current azure environment Ma okay could you please explain how your azure vm securities are ensured in your platforms so coming to azure vm securities right so as i said initially uh, we have a subnet level network security group available so when we define a policy across the vm whichever you know comes under the same subnet they'll get impacted i mean uh, only the allowed port can be accessible so apart from that each and every virtual machine they have their own uh, you know security group so of course we have a subnet level also we do have a option to uh, you know restrict them on top of a virtual machine level as well so in both the area whichever the port is really mandatory for the virtual machine we have enabled and inside the vm if you go we have a monitoring tool we have you know uh, log management tool agents are part of it so and application you know monitoring and application service monitoring tool everything is enabled by default across our platform so you know using all these things right we ensure our environment is secure and we ensure our uh, platform is secure especially virtual machines so these are the area we can give our consideration ma'am okay that's good what is the difference between fault domains and update domains so basically when you go into the physical uh, you know infrastructure about azure data center if you go deep dive about regions and zones we have a you know physical environment where we'll have a rack kind of you know service where each and every rack right we used to call it as a fault domain and each and every you know service which play around which is something called as a update domain so for um, the main reason we come for fault domain and update domain is only purely for a high availability when i have an application when i'm trying to host it on virtual machine i need to make sure that should be highly available uh, which means even though if something happened to my vm right any anything happened back in hardware issue or anything happened network outage to the specific rack so i supposed to escape from that uh, you know simple outage that's why uh, azure introduced the concept of fault domain and update domain so we need to plan in such a way my application uh, okay which is hosted in my virtual machine the virtual machine distributed across a multiple fault domain by the name of uh, you know multiple update domain so this way right which brings brings me a high availability and the security uh, to my application so this is the difference between fault domain and update domain okay how are you different from the aws cloud Yeah, i have a basic idea about aws as well since we used to have a multi cloud environment in my platform but i strong in azure so coming to the differences right i personally noticed aws is bit faster than azure when we go for creating any resources or if you are performing any activity aws is a bit faster than azure Uh, apart from that right i i am getting you know proper technical support from aws immediately you know the responsible person will be coming and they are you know helping on time where i felt you know something missing in uh, uh, azure standpoint and coming to devops right azure gives more priority to devops and many automation and things and stuff right it it became more uh, comfortable when we work with uh, devops they have a uh, many features and many implementation they have done uh, apart from that interface user interface level aws looks good uh, apart from that technically and service level right here we have easy to in here we have virtual machine here people used to call it the vpc here we are calling it the vnet here s3 their storage account here also load balancer there also load balancer here people calling us auto scaling over there availability set uh, availability scale set and here route 53 over there dns uh, so here cloud watch over there monitor so the, the technically you know things are good uh, but only the naming convention will differ okay from uh, you know cloud to cloud it gonna uh, differ the uh, uh naming convention apart from that right uh, there are lots of people are using aws as far as my understanding azure no uh, it's really good uh, you know comparing other cloud providers but when compared to aws right uh, overall no uh, need some improvisation that's my personal opinion but good azure good uh, we can have almost all the features are available even today okay, this is what my observation when compare azure aws Okay, what is the best practice to maintain Azure infrastructure? 
So basically, in order to maintain Azure infrastructure, best practice is all about uh, we need to ensure uh, to go with uh, cost efficiently when we are picking any uh, uh, virtual machine hardware, uh, you know, hardware uh, uh, configuration. We need to make sure the hardware consumptions are very uh, less. Okay, unnecessarily we are supposed to not unnecessarily we are not supposed to waste any hardware. And by the way, when we go for uh, uh, setting up the network infrastructure and all, right? We need to make sure it should be properly secured. And we need to establish proper monitoring functionality end to end. Okay, because if something happened, we need to make sure a monitoring tool capturing the information. And we need to integrate some log analytics tool, Splunk or something like that. Even Azure itself by default has cloud, uh, you know, cloud network watcher kind of diagnostic log diagnostic tools. Those things are available. We need to make sure to you know enable those functionality. So in addition to that, if you ask me, it means uh, uh, we have to you know uh, make sure. Uh, the connectivity part from my on premises that is, should be secure okay and we have to make sure all the peerings are properly configured and we need to make sure db environment should be in private and uh, private network okay as much as possible we need to avoid public connectivity direct to internet from my azure okay so likewise and we need to make sure all the uh, storage volumes and uh, storages and the virtual machine disk everything should be encrypted with the uh, you know azure key so by these all the way, right, we can, you know, uh, consider these all the best practice to maintain a proper uh, Azure infrastructure and Azure platform. Uh. Okay. My client wants to pull out the uh, report, to, report of uh, available resources in specific resource manager. How will you do? Yeah, basically in order to pull the resource list, right? Mm, yeah. So we have a couple of options. Uh, we can go ahead and we can pick the... Uh, all resources service in Azure portal. From that, right, uh, we can you know generate the report. Okay, that is uh, by the way we can generate a CSV. We have a uh, many filter options. We can export as a CSV. That is one way. Else, we can go with PowerShell uh, script. We have you know PowerShell uh, script modules are there. We need to go with Azure AZ model to be installed. We can write a script to pull out whichever the resources are available under the subscription or under the, any resource group. So this couple of way you no know, most convenient and easiest one to go with. Okay, could you please explain the services offered in the Azure Cloud? Uh, services, yeah. Uh, since I told you how many times, virtual machine, Azure Active Directory, Azure IAM, and the storage account, DNS, you know, availability set, load balancers. Uh, uh, you know, apart from that, you know, log analytics, uh, network watcher, monitoring, uh, you know, key vault, backup and recovery. And uh, we have, you know, the recovery service vault and uh, likewise, you know, uh, lots of, you know, snapshot disk. Uh, likewise, we have a uh, many, many different uh, services are available. I used to exposure with all these services, uh, DevOps, ARM and uh, Azure Functions, Runbook. Again, these are the tools, you know, I have a good familiarization on Azure. Okay, Aririn, I will handle the data to HR team. They will get back to you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thanks a lot.